Alright, so this is my capstone project. This is a demonstration video uh, to show off the functioning or the different functions of the project. Um, and I guess we'll just kind of start things off right away. Uh, right up here we've got the planter box. Uh, so this contains all of our plants. There's got a hose, there's a, there's a hose right here which has holes in it which waters the plants and you can see there's a moisture probe right there. There's actually two of those. Um, and we've got all of our plants, of course. Down here, we've got our electronics. We've got the keypad, the LCD screen, and more importantly, all the inner workings of everything. We've got an Arduino Mega, a relay board, and a Raspberry Pi. That is the black box at the back there. And we've got some terminals, which route everything to the different compartments. Uh, down here we've got the uh, the water pump and the float switch which is in the back the white thing in the back uh, right corner I've got a twist tie around it right now which is holding in the upwards position so the systems currently uh, had an alarm where there's no water left but we're going to resolve that and since the float switch is held open uh, the system will think that there is water back in the tank so I don't have to fill it up again uh, since I did demonstrate this in class already. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to go to our main menu, which is the star key. We can navigate to the different pages of the menu using the uh, the letter keys. And this is standard across the whole interface. So you always press the star key to go back to the main menu. And now you can choose page A, page B, page C, and D doesn't do anything because there's only three pages. So if we go to page C, we can see we get our system alarm. So we'll go uh, hit 5 and you can see that the low water alarm is present so if we hit number 1 and now it says low water alarm number 1 press pound to acknowledge so we'll press the pound key and now you can see the water level is okay if the float was still down it would tell you that you cannot resolve the alarm until you fill the tank but since we've kind of bypassed that uh, the system thinks it's fine if there is an alarm state where there is uh, where the water level is low. The pump will never be allowed to operate. It doesn't matter whether you try from the HMI or whether you try to manually operate it from the keypad. It will not allow you to operate the pump. This is because the pump is submersible, which means that it does require water. Uh, it, it needs to be submersed in water in order for it to operate. And if you try to operate it without it submersed in water, it won't be able to pump the water and also there's a very high chance you could burn out the pump because it requires the water to cool itself. As you can see here, I haven't done anything to the screen for a while and now it's in a screensaver mode which means it kind of scrolls through uh, the different things that the system is monitoring. Uh, this can all be monitored um, as well manually by going to, again, you press star, then you go to the, you know, the temperature menu. You can see I do have two temperature sensors. Uh, so I get two different readings and you can see that here. You can also see under moisture I have two different readings as well and these readings are actually averaged together. They're added together and then uh, the average is taken and that's actually what the system is working off of. So there's two different points of measurement and this allows for I think a more accurate reading of the overall uh, what the garden is actually experiencing. Uh, now if we go down to page B, we can see the lamp status and fan and pump pages. If we go to the lamp status, you can see there's one, two, we go page B, three and four. These can actually be manually controlled individually from the keypad here as well. Uh, and I guess I should show that uh, in operation. If we go like this, you can see that there's lamp one, there's lamp two, three, and four and that's you know optional really you don't really need to use that too much but um, it is another way to allow you to have more control over the system and I will show you they're currently on a time node so they come on and off automatically but we can actually uh, leave certain ones on and certain ones off permanently or until we control them from the HMI if we go to page B though here and we'll go fan and pump Again, we can operate the fan. It's hard to tell. I'm not sure if it's actually going to be picking that up. But if we try turning it on, 
can see that it turns on and I can press it again to turn it off. Do the same thing for the pump, however, I'm not going to do so because, uh, you know, the pump is not submerged in water. But it, I assure you it can, can work. Uh, you know what, actually, we'll, we'll quickly do it. It only runs for three seconds, so I don't think it's the end of the world. Uh, if we go to number two. It makes a very horrible sound and uh, does not pump any water because it's not submerged. Anyways, there's that as well. Uh, now, if we go whoops, to page B, yep, we covered all of these pages. We go to page 5. We covered the system alarms, how to clear alarms. Page 6 is really where all the magic happens because this is where you can control a lot of different parameters. Uh, so for the first one is the screensaver. It's really, it's optional. You don't really need to do much, but you can choose how quickly it will cycle through the different pages. So let's do that. Let's change that to one so it cycles through really fast. Uh, and let's go screensaver again. I want to change the run delay. This is basically how long do you have to leave the screen uh, before it will start up, right? And it's set to 10 seconds. I'm actually going to, yeah, see 10 seconds and boom, it's already started to, uh, to run the screensaver. You can see now it's scrolling really fast though. Let's go back to the page again. And also one thing I, I made sure of is if you remember what page number each menu is, you don't have to go A, B, C to see it. A, B, C, D just shows you the options, like kind of scrolling through the different options you have. But uh, you can just punch the number in directly without having to, to look at them. See again here, there's two different pages, but if I remember number four is the lamps, I can just go six four and I'll just get to the configuration right away makes it a little bit easier to navigate again those no screensaver let's change the uh, the run delay to a maximum value of 99 actually let's try doing uh, a value that's too big so if I do 999 that's outside the value if I hit pound it says invalid value out of range so again there's there's checks for that but if let's go we'll, we'll go to 99 we'll hit enter parameter changed it confirms that and let's go to our watering um, this is where things start to get interesting the watering has a little bit less flexibility than the, the lights and the fan but we'll start with the water because I think it's the most important actually there's two different modes of operation and there's two different things that you have to keep track of when you're watering and that's starting the watering when do you start and when do you stop and they both have the capability of running in open or closed loop uh, zero is open loop and uh, uh, one is closed loop. They're currently in open loop right now, which means that the water would operate by the open loop parameters, which is the wait time and run time. Basically, what's going to happen, it's going to wait three hours before it starts because it's the start mode is zero. And it's going to run for three seconds once it's told to run. And then it's only three seconds until it stops, right? But if I change these both to 1s, which we can actually do, let's go 1, pound, and then we got to go back into watering. Okay, sometimes it, sometimes it doesn't like to accept it. We'll try it again. Let's see if, uh, if that worked. There we go. Yep. Yeah, so that's why these are visible here, because sometimes it, uh, it doesn't accept the value, which uh, is strange. There we go. See, now it works. Um, so now we're running in closed loop, which basically means instead of running every three hours for three seconds, the pump, it's going to operate by these parameters, moisture on and moisture off, which basically means once the soil moisture is 70%, it's going to start the pump and it will not stop the pump until 90% is reached. So in my opinion, that's the smartest way to, you know, obviously water the garden and would probably be the parameter that most people choose. But again, it's the flexibility to have these options because it really depends on what kind of plants are you actually keeping in the garden up here, right? Like you could have all kinds of different plants and, uh, you know, that way this is very configurable. But let's go back. We've talked about this for the watering, so I'm not going to talk about it for the uh, air temperature because it operates the same way where you can run in closed loop or open loop. The closed loop is based off the temperature, so basically it will turn the fan on, you know, when, in, when it hits 25 degrees Celsius, and it won't turn off until 20 degrees Celsius is reached. So this might be useful for, you know, if you're storing this thing in a 
bright sunny area, this top compartment is going to get pretty hot pretty quickly. So having that is very good. Or what you can do is you can just run it on a closed or sorry, open loop, which means that it's running one minute on one minute off. And that's what's happening. You're seeing that with the lights too. They're running one minute on one minute off, which is the lowest value you can set for the timing. But this is where things get a little bit more interesting, where you can start kind of taking advantage of uh, little uh, extra options, I guess. Basically, you can set the minimum value to zero, and it will accept that. So let's go back to the fan again. So we want air temperature. You can see it accepts zero minutes, and I can do the same thing for the runtime, zero minutes. And now, now we are no longer running anything autonom autonomously. We have full control over the fan. So this fan, now that it's on, is going to run indefinitely. There's no command that's going to tell it to stop. I've basically removed the control of the fan from the system here. So now we can control it, which I'll show you later from the HMI over here, or we can control it directly from the keypad. And this is useful for, you know, you just want that fan running all the time. And you can do the same thing with the lights. The lights only operate in open loop in, in the case, you know, they run on or off um, timed mode, or you can do the same thing where you can set it to zero minutes. Um, and that means that you can just turn on specific lights because there is room for probably about four different types of plants in here if you wanted to, which is why there's four different lights. So maybe some plants need more light than others. So that's useful, you know, you can turn on the lights above the plants that need it most, and then you can just expect the plants that don't need as much light to kind of just feed off the light that's bouncing around from the other ones. So that's that's an option there too. And that's about everything we can talk about, you know, the, the lights as well, but it's really the same thing as the, uh, it's really the same thing as the fan, where, you know, you can run it in uh, just a timed mode, and that's the only options. So since the, that's the only options, you can either have the lights stay on, stay off, um, or you can have it turning on and off on a timed interval. And I'm actually going to quickly uh, disable these. So I'm going to set them to zero as well. So these lights will not uh, turn on and off, you know, by themselves anymore. They're going to require me to send them a command for them to turn on and off. Can I... Sometimes the keys are a little bit tricky. And I'm also going to go back here since this fan has been running for a while. We're going to go four and we're gonna turn the fan off just like that. And now, again, we can do the same thing. We'll go down to the lamp statuses. Now we could say, okay, we want lamp one to be on, so we'll turn on lamp one. And we want lamp four to be on, turn on lamp four. And nothing's going to change that. This is all manual control now, which is very handy. But we're gonna move on to the HMI now. I'm gonna to try to keep things short, but there's just so much to talk about sometimes. Another thing that uh, my capstone project included was a Raspberry Pi. And I haven't really talked about anything with the Raspberry Pi yet because everything that I've shown before this has to do with the Arduino. But all of the data that the Arduino is capturing is sent over serial connection to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is then connected to the network, which then allows me to connect my laptop or my phone or my tablet, whatever I want, to be able to access an HMI. Now this HMI is built on a software called Node-RED, and Node-RED is installed on the Raspberry Pi. So basically what's happening is the data from the Arduino is being sent to the Raspberry Pi over serial connections, and then the Raspberry Pi now has that data, and it is used in the software of Node-RED. Now I can access this Node-RED software over the network, which is what I'm doing right here, and you can see that you know the, the data flow basically of all the data that I have in my uh, in my project is being sent from the Arduino here. It is being uh, dis like it's being sorted, I guess, uh, using the switch statement here. It basically checks what kind of data it is, and then I'm displaying it in the proper uh, in the proper value or the proper form uh, on the HMI. And I'm doing the same thing with sending data back since I do have some control from the HMI here as well. Uh, I'm sending all that data back to the Arduino right here. 
Now, if we go back to the HMI here, you can see that all the information is being shown. You can see the temperature, you can see the moisture in, in the, in the uh, garden, and this is all averaged data. Since there's two temperature sensors, you have to remember, they're being summed together, and then it's being divided by two and being stored or uh, shown here. Same thing with soil moisture, added together and then divided by two to get the average. And you can also see all these blue, uh, these blue things, those are the controls. So I can tell the lamp one to turn off, I can tell it to turn off, or turn on, sorry, and I can tell it to turn off, just like so. And I can do the same thing with the fan and the pump, as long as, uh, remember, the pump needs, there needs to be water in the tank, otherwise this will not work, this pump uh, button will not work. I'm not going to run it, again, like I said, I don't have water in the tank. You can also tell if the water level is, uh, is low. Uh, that would be shown here, and it would not go away even if you fill a tank, because you have to acknowledge the alarm before it will allow you to run the pump and before this goes away. So it does. it's kind of a two-step process, right? And also you can see here, if I turn lamp one on, it also shows that it is indeed on right here. Uh, and you can see that with the fan as well. I can turn the fan on, and you can see again that updates over here. So pretty basic pretty uh, pretty okay but I think one thing I neglected to show in my uh, in my demonstration at the school which I think is kind of important if not uh, really interesting um, and that is this right here the plots page so this is a second page to my HMI I don't think I showed this at the school and that is a bit of a shame but you can see here it is actually plotting uh, the moisture and the uh, temperature over time. So you can see that right here, that it's plotted over time, and the scale is off the side as well, which makes sense. We're getting about 18 degrees, 19 degrees or something. So, And even if I hover over top, you can see it actually does tell you at, at a specific instance in time what exactly uh, the temperature actually was, which is very useful. And this is why Node-RED, in my opinion, is super versatile, because you can do this sort of stuff just with a bit of data. Um, connection lost? Oh, okay. No, it's refreshing. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's basically the HMI. Um, I could dive into all the code and stuff too, but I think I'm going to be showing, or I guess present, or submitting that. So I don't think there's really too much point in doing that. I kind of dived into that already in my previous video about this project. This is more just a focus on the on the physical thing. And I hope I covered everything and that I'm not forgetting anything. I think I did. And I hope that uh, this is this is good. Thank you for watching my presentation on this project. And uh, yeah, I think that's it.